Hello everyone, in this video, we're going to have an update on the Flux image generation and enhancement workflow that we continue for making AI video scenes. For example, we have AI videos, stories, movies, or music videos we want to do. In AI, a lot of stuff happening right now, many news and update every week. We see a lot of nice work people did on social media using AI like this and Flux AI image generation one of the buzz currently. So we can use Flux to create high quality images and bring them to AI video generator. For example, I'm using Kling AI and you can use Runway ML, whatever you want to use, Luma Labs, etc. Previously, we talked about Flux image generation and using SDXL for segmentation detail. And there's still some improvement we need to do. For example, in the video scenes we have, like the previous one that we have the character, I want to make the outfit of each character be consistent like this one. Sometimes when we generate video scenes for the image, it will change the outfit of the character and the face cannot remain the same. We can fix that by using our updated workflow here that I created a couple of days ago. This is the updated version of the workflow creating the AI video scene using Flux models. Right here, I have the Flux models loader. We're using the FP8 checkpoint version model. We're using the Flux realism LoRa models. And next, we're going to have the Flux in dev, which we can do in InPaint using the Flux models. It's not loading SDXL, it's directly using the Flux models FP8 version. We do in paint model conditions. Lastly, bring it to the K sampler for the image latent image processing just like a normal practical way using K sampler and VAE decode. Then we got the output of the image that I want. In this way, we can keep the outfit of the character consistent. For example, I have an outfit here that I masked. So for example, this t-shirt is kind of a dark color and for this character, it should be a light gray color t-shirt. By doing that, I mask the area and do an in-paint by using a text prompt. That way we can edit the t-shirt color as well as the body shape that fits with the character itself, this image, then it will bring it to a consistent style. But sometimes if you have a character that has a specific pattern of outfit, for example, you got a logo on the t-shirt, etc., you might want to use another step that's going to be changing outfit by using IP adapter. And this is an alternative way that you can mask the region and change the character outfit as well. Let's come back to here. We can disable step two and move on to step three. Going to this step three, we're using the outfit by IP adapter. This way we're loading our character for the source for the reference image that we have created. All this image of the character face and the character outfit in previous work then, for example, like this character, I have the face and the outfit of that character generate few images with happy face and a normal face and alternative outfit of the character as well and also some face images like a portrait image of the character as well and all of them are pretty similar styles of outfit so i can use that for the outfit as well we can keep the consistent styles of the character in our ai videos yeah, so for example, like this one, I'm using this image and I remove the background before it loads into the prep for clip vision. So right here, the clip vision will only focus on the character itself and it brings to IP adapter, like what we usually do using IP adapter. But this time we're using a tent mask for regional IP adapter prompt. So we input this image as a load image and mask the area in this part. The only thing that the IP adapter is going to influence is going to be the masked area. And right here, we have the influence IP adapter area right here. As you can see, there's a watch and the jeans. The t-shirt is the same as the reference image, but then sometimes it will be a little bit off. Different image styles, I can say, not fully realism styles. Maybe we can bring it to another detailer to enhance that. Alternatively, you can use the cat virtual try on method. I'm trying this one, but it doesn't give me pretty good results as what I want for AI video scenes. So I prefer using the IP adapter and it is more flexible for different angles of the character and is able to apply that for the outfit and other items on the AI image. So I prefer, yes, the outfit by IP adapter. And you can also use that for the background as well. If you want to change the background, any objects on the image. Lastly, we're going to see the segmentation detailer right here. Since we have multiple objects, we have to do a detailer segmentation. 
we're going to mask the character objects. So in the segmentation mask here, we're choosing the person and we exclude the face because we're going to do a face swap in the later steps. So here we exclude the face area and again we do the character mask area at the final steps and bring it to the detailer for segmentations. Then we get more detailed enhancement without some gypsy pixels on the image. Moving on, we're going to apply character faces to the image scenes. This is a very typical easy thing that we've talked about with the reactor face swap a lot before so I don't think I have to introduce this method. Since we have two characters here, we apply two reactor face swap nodes to use for our character faces. As I mentioned, I've already created the face images for different characters, which I did before creating the image or the AI video stories. I create each character's details. For example, this character got adopted by the ghost. And as you can see, I've got pretty much the same style of outfit for this character. And the faces are also the same. So I can apply those images for face swap as well as the IP adapter in the previous steps here. Once we have everything generated and we get the image scene result, we have the clear face of each character. And lastly, we pass it to the upscaler. For the upscaler, we're using two upscales. Again, when we have the generated result from the previous steps, I would do a copy clip space and bring that to the next steps load image node and do the paste clip space button here. We choose that and we'll paste that temporary generated image to the load image itself. Once we have this image for the load image node, then we do an upscale by ultra sharp, or sometimes I can do a face sharpening using the upscale models. I can do image sharpening here and then use another upscaler to just enhance the image resolution larger upscale. Then we get the final result here. This is the final result and it will be saved to our folder. Once we have the image for the AI video scenes, then we can go to whatever AI video generator you prefer to use. I currently subscribe to Kling AI. Then I use Kling AI in this case. I bring my image from my generated result to here and you can do some text prompts. Even in Runway ML, LumaLabs AI, you can do an image to video and use text prompts here. I don't use the professional mode. Some people's comments in the previous videos asked me if I do that and I don't. I just use the 5 seconds here, and I do another extension of 5 seconds in another generation. That way, we can just test for the first 5 seconds in this generation. For example, in this case, the girl is holding a flashlight and walking into the darkroom. Then, in the text prompt, maybe we can do some description as well. So, right here we have a prompt, just a very simple description. I usually like to use a simple prompt to do the AI videos. Just tell the AI what is about in that image you want to do for just those few seconds of actions. In this case, it's two girls holding a flashlight walking into the abandoned house. I want the style to be scary and dark. That's all I need. And I use standard mode 5 seconds to test the settings. Here I'll be putting up to 0.7. I just need more relevancy of the actions from this image. I don't need too much creativity from the AI. Then here in the negative prompt, I can do like, you know, blur, deform, low quality, etc. Just something that prevents your AI videos from not getting a good result. But in general, I'll just put these three negative prompts. It's good enough for me. So click generate and just use 10 credits. We don't need to do professional mode yet. I'll be extending the videos to 10 seconds if that image scene needs to be extended to 10 seconds longer, or I want some more actions in that AI video moment. So it depends. There's no textbook answer for that. It's all about creativity. And yeah, we can wait for the result and see how that goes. Okay, so here's the final result of the video scene that I just generated. Although the image is going to be a little bit morphing on the face, not going to be very clear. We can bring it back to Comfy UI Animate Diff and regenerate that and refine the sharpening, making the face better, restore the face. And here's the extended 10 seconds of that image to video scene, and it looks okay, but the light, the light direction of this one is a little bit incorrect. But yeah, we can still, you know, use this one as the image to video generated result if not much is broken on the character, etc. So we can keep using the five seconds video of this one and maybe we can do some enhancement to restore the face using Comfy UI in the next steps. So in the next video, maybe we'll be using Animate Diff in Comfy UI 
and do a V2V processing for the video refinement. You know, sometimes in Kling AI or Runway, Luma Labs AI, whatever AI video generator you have, they sometimes don't always get perfect for the face. And this is a very good example of this one. And yeah, we can refine and restore the face and do some detail work on that. So I hope this gives you some ideas on how you can make AI videos image scenes using Flux InPaint and Stable Diffusion IP Adapter. The images are only the guideline for the AI video generator for the starting frames or end frames. If you understand how to use that image to guide the AI video generator, you'll create some pretty good results. Just something like this. It's also using AI to generate. And yeah, this one's using Runway ML. It's pretty cool. So something like that can be produced using Comfy UI and AI video generators. We'll see how far we can go using this method. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.